Hello everyone. My name is Yekaterina Osipenko. I'm the head of research and methodology at the Emotional Intelligence Lab in Moscow, Russia. The paper I will be presenting today is titled Relationship between Emotional Intelligence and Subjective Economic Wellbeing. The research for this paper was conducted by our team, Professor Yelena Klignaya, Tatiana Kisilova, PhD, Alexandra Nikitina, and me, under the guidance of Professor Yelena Sergeyenko from the Institute of Psychology of the Russian Academy of Sciences, which is also in Moscow, Russia. At our lab, we primarily work on research on various aspects of emotional intelligence as an ability. The theory of emotional intelligence as an ability was first postulated by Salovey and Meyer from Yale University and New Hampshire University in 1990 and was then further refined and defined in the subsequent decades. In this model, emotional intelligence is conceived as consisting of four separate abilities. The ability to perceive emotions, the ability to use emotions to facilitate thought, the ability to understand emotions, and the ability to manage emotions. All of these abilities apply to both oneself and others. The visual representation of the four abilities can be seen on the right-hand side of the uh, slide. Together, these four abilities are associated with various performance and well-being outcomes. Previous research suggests that high levels of emotional intelligence are associated with higher well-being, coping skills, and competence. While people with low levels of emotional intelligence tend to have higher levels of perceived stress. Overall, this might suggest that people with heightened feelings of control and emotional competence and being able to manage their emotions tend to adopt proactive and effective coping strategies, which increases their well-being overall. In the past 30 years, a great amount of research into emotional intelligence has been conducted. Scientists found a relationship between high levels of EI and self-esteem, life satisfaction, and self-acceptance. However, the relationship between emotional intelligence and subjective economic well-being has been less researched. This is largely because of the fact that for a long time the very concept of economic well-being was considered the prerogative of only economic science, not psychological where it is viewed as synonymous with the objective characteristics of wealth, material, financial, and social conditions of human life in general. In order to fill in this gap, we have conducted a study into this relationship. While there is no consensus on what exactly economic subjective well-being is, most of the researchers consider it as an aspect of the general well-being of a person that is directly related to money and material means. Previous research also suggests that subjective economic well-being may be one of the main substructures of the quality of life. In our work, we identify subjective economic well-being as an integral psychological indicator that expresses a person's attitude to her current and future material well-being. There is some suggestion even that Subjective economic well-being largely explains differences in overall life satisfaction and that it may be a more accurate indicator of a person's perception of their economic well-being than objective values, such as GDP per capita. This means that the actual value of material wealth that a person possesses may be less important to a person in terms of their life satisfaction than the perception that they have about this material wealth, which is, of course, a highly relative and subjective matter. Considering the results of previous research on the link between emotional intelligence and life satisfaction and well-being, as well as the link between subjective economic well-being and life satisfaction, we have constructed a study that would look at the relationship between emotional intelligence and economic well-being directly. 
The novelty of the study consisted in the analysis of the role of emotional intelligence in the subjective economic well-being of a person as an indicator of her psychological health and adaptability to modern living conditions. In addition, this study sheds light on the psychological factors of economic well-being and economic behavior of people that make up the human resources of a society's economy. We believe that the level of emotional intelligence is interconnected with the subjective economic well-being indicators of a person, while the degree and specificity of these relationships still remains poorly understood. We have measured emotional intelligence with the Russian language emotional intelligence test, which is an objective measure consisting of 146 questions that measure the level of development of the four emotional intelligence abilities that are themselves measured by questions divided into 10 subscales. The level of development of two domains of emotional intelligence, experiential and strategic, where experiential domain consists of the abilities to identify and use emotions and is the more basic of the two, while strategic consists of the abilities to understand and manage emotions and is more advanced, are also given by the test. The test also provides a result for the overall level of development of emotional intelligence and consists of questions such as, uh, for example, please look at this photograph of a face. To what extent are the following emotions expressed on the face? Where several emotions are listed beneath. Therefore, the questions have right and wrong answers. And as such, the test measures the actual emotional intelligence abilities of a person rather than their perception about their abilities. The subjective economic well-being was measured with the subjective economic well-being questionnaire, which was also administered in Russian language. The subjective economic well-being questionnaire measures five individual factors, as well as a general subjective economic well-being index. The five factors include the economic optimism pessimism index, the economic anxiety index, the index of the subjective adequacy of income, the financial deprivation index, and the index of current family well-being. All of these indices together reflect the subjective well-being of a person directly related to money and material needs. The reliability of measures used was measured in previous studies also by us. The emotional intelligence test showed a high degree of reliability and structural and factorial validity. The theoretical validity of it was also confirmed by looking at the correlations between the emotional intelligence test and SKID, the method, the test that was conceived by Meyer Salovey Caruso, the co-founders of the theory of emotional intelligence as an ability. The subjective economic well-being questionnaire also showed an acceptable level of reliability. The study itself was conducted in Russia online throughout the summer of 2020, so in between the two big waves of the pandemic, when stress was still very high, but not as high as during spring and autumn. The final sample consisted of 243 Russian adults, of which 61 were men and 182 were women all employed, aged 18 to 67 years, with a mean age of 36.1 years. The participants were invited to participate in the study via social media, so Instagram, Facebook, and other routes. The analysis of the sample showed that around half of the participants lived in the capitals, so Moscow and St. Petersburg, while half of them were from rural areas of Russia. So while the sample itself is not too big, uh, it gives a good representation of people from Russia. On this slide, you can see the results of the statistical analysis. The statistically significant results are highlighted in orange. The data obtained showed that there is indeed a significant relationship between many aspects of emotional intelligence and subjective economic well-being. In particular, the subjective degree of sufficiency of financial resources, the subjective optimistic assessment of external and internal conditions for the growth of material well-being, 
as well as the overall subjective economic well-being index, had a large number of positive correlations with emotional, emotional intelligence abilities. However, all of the significant effects obtained were of a rather small size. Nevertheless, there were some interesting results obtained. For example, people with high levels of emotion identification, abilities to use and understand emotions, both of the domains, and overall emotional intelligence level had higher subjective levels of financial wealth. People with high levels of emotional identification abilities, ability to use emotions, and ability to manage emotions, as well as the experiential domain and overall AI, had a more subjectively optimistic assessment of the external and internal conditions for increasing their material well-being. And people with higher levels of their abilities to use and manage emotions, both of the domains and overall emotional intelligence, had a higher overall subjective economic well-being. As such, the ability to use emotions for problem solving, the ability to manage emotions, and the experiential domain of AI, which is the more basic domain out of the two, are key emotional intelligence factors associated with subjective economic well-being. This indicates the importance of emotional intelligence for people's subjective economic well-being and, therefore, for their overall well-being. We suggest that further research needs to be conducted into this link between emotional intelligence and well-being, especially now, during the pandemic, when the stress factors affecting people are so incredibly high. This should lead to effective targeted intervention measures that might ameliorate the well-being of people and the life satisfaction of society as a whole. Thank you very much for your attention. Please send any of your questions or feedback that you might have to my email, osipenko at alab.ru, uh, which is on the screen right now as well. I will be very happy to answer them. And thank you very much.